Hello and welcome. It's the start of a new themed reading vlog, which I'm excited about. I have not done a themed reading vlog in a quick minute. So I went to boxing this morning. I ran some errands. Now I'm still kind of just like drying my hair and whatnot and it's super freaking hot out and i just bought an ac and i'm living in my air conditioning era however this room is not air conditioned which is a bit of a problem so i'm gonna make this intro clip brief i do want to talk about what this vlog is gonna be but first i do want to give a shout out to a book i just finished i actually have my little sleeve here my best friend got me for my birthday I found it on Amazon but I just finished The Crown of Ivy and Glass or A Crown of Ivy and Glass by Claire Legrand Claire Legrand wrote Furyborn oh you can't see it she wrote Furyborn it's in place of honor here literally one of my favorite fantasy trilogies of all time and this is a world um it says it's Bridgerton meets Akatar so it's kind of like this Regency world but there's magic and demons and whatnot. So we have Gemma, who's just like this very lonely soul, and then Talon, who his whole family died, so he's also very lonely, and these two lonely souls connect, and then things just get dark and twisted. So I started this thinking it was gonna be kind of like a cute little Regency fantasy romance, and then it just spiraled into chaos, and it became like a dark fantasy horror. Like there was definitely like some horror elements in here, and I thought it was so, good i thought it was so good i loved this i think this world is so intriguing and the ending kind of shattered my heart a little bit um but it's going to be set up that each individual book follows the three sisters and that's going to be the trilogy so i think that's interesting from a structure standpoint because that's more commonly done in just like you know standalone romances and stuff but the fantasy plot is still going to be intricately woven together so i'm gonna be very interested to see how she pulls it off but i love this one of my top reads of the year for sure so i have to figure out how to fit that book on that shelf but that's a problem for another i actually do think i have a little bit of space aha uh -huh, i did leave space what the heck? Oh, this is like really wedged in there huh actually let's leave this in the corner Oh, it kind of matches with Daughter of the Pirate Queen, which I also need to get the new versions of Daughter of the Pirate Queen and Daughter of the Siren Queen. This is an owl, but yeah, it's like this and this. These are like my fave authors. Oh, and this book also had a very good chronic pain and chronic anxiety and panic attack rep. And I thought it was very well done, especially in the fantasy setting. Basically, magic makes her sick. So is very cool and obviously i'll be doing more i need to like sit down and write my review i think it's gonna be a thing that i'm gonna be doing soon however what is this vlog for well you clicked on it so you probably already know but i am going to be doing a fantasy romance themed vlog for the daughter of no worlds and i'm planning on reading the whole trilogy so the war of lost hearts trilogy so this is about Tasana who has lived her life in slavery and she ended up murdering someone when she tried to escape. So she's forced to flee and she's pledged herself to the orders and organization of magic wielders strong enough to destroy her former masters. And so she is forced into an apprenticeship with this man named Max uh, who's a fire wielder and despises the orders and he has no interest in helping her. I have been seeing this book everywhere like everyone loves Chris of broadband and let the record state i recommended this book in my first fantasy romance video in 2020 i never read it but i did recommend it so i feel i feel like i was ahead of the curve on that you know however i'm finally getting around to it and i did buy the hardcover which was over the pricey and it's got this beautiful butterfly design so i'm kind of obsessed I do think that I'm not going to annotate this just because it was so expensive. I also don't need to tab every single book that I read, even if I love the book. You know what I mean? I don't have to. So that's the plan, and this is what I'll be reading in this vlog, and it's going to be a vlog focused on this trilogy. I have the next book coming in the mail, and then I'll probably buy the next one after, just because they're a little more expensive, kind of space them out, you know? But I'm sweating because this room does not have AC, so I'm going to go sit in the AC and start this beautiful book. Hello pals, we are filming from the floor today because 
I feel like you don't ever get to see the bottoms of my bookshelves. Like these over here. Ooh, maybe I go in this corner. So, update. I'm reading Daughter of No World and I'm obsessed. I didn't realize that her magic manifests in like butterflies. And so this series has a lot of butterfly imagery. And if anyone had told me that, I, I love butterflies. I have a tattoo of a butterfly. I would have picked this book up much sooner. <laughs> that was all you had to do to convince me. So I have, see this special edition here. I'm loving this so far. So we have Tasana. she has been a slave and she escaped and she goes to this like distant land on his aura and she wants to join the orders and use the order of sunlight the order of midnight i think and they each have magic that manifests in different ways but she's so much older than like all of the children that come there to learn their powers and there's like cycles of apprenticeships so there's no mentors left so they pair her with max who is kind of like a recluse he says he's retired he doesn't really want anything to do with the order because of something traumatic that happened to him and he is her reluctant teacher it's really interesting dynamic so far because tasana really just wants to fight for freedom from the slaves and that is kind of why she's like using the order to achieve this goal and max like literally wants nothing to do with the politics of the order he doesn't really believe that they're like right and it's kind of this like interesting play there's also like a bit of a language barrier because tasana isn't like perfectly fluent in their language which is english so it's kind of like cool getting to see her become like better at communicating with him and so far she's a really interesting setup i love the mentor mentee relationship it's definitely gonna be slow burn but i think i've been thinking about this i think i like romance or fantasy romance where it's like truly more of a focus on the plot and the romance is there and it's good but it's like secondary to everything else that's happening because if it focuses too much on the romance then it kind of sometimes can take away from the fantasy element but i think that also just depends because there's different fantasy romances you can go into them knowing that they're going to be more heavy on the romance and that's fine but you know what i mean but like i'm going into this kind of expecting an epic fantasy with really good romance that is spicy that's kind of what i want that's kind of like the fourth wing vibe the akatar vibe like there's still it's still very plot heavy and you're still into everything else that is happening in the book that's what's going on with that actually let me see i ordered a special package Doo -doo -doo. Let's see if my package has arrived yet 1 30 to 4 30 okay so it's not here yet so i'll do a little update clip when it gets here but yesterday taz texted me at like 4 30 she's like i'm at barnes and noble do you want to come and i'm like be there in a second and i just whoop, drove right to bnn and i had some gift cards and i made a return so i decided to purchase this the miss warren set so i have been wanting i don't know if i should keep this box like maybe for now and then when i read them i'll get rid of it but i've been wanting to read miss warren so hold on did start miss warren like two years ago and i just like really i hit a really bad reading slump when i started it and the problem do i even still have the bookmark in here oh my god i do see like i had tabs in here i didn't even tab it so the problem with these edition i got 200 pages in it's pretty good i really liked what i read like i didn't hate anything about it i just it wasn't the right time like i was on vacation and i wanted something easy so the problem with these is that they're very stiff and i really don't want to ruin the spines because they are very nice but because the U.S. is kind of coming out with these like really nice floppy editions that oh my god this the text is so small um, that kind of like are more updated and I just think they're easier to, to read because hello um, I think I'm gonna start collecting these editions instead and not and I'm probably gonna put these up on my Pango books I mean you it's not like you can't buy them anymore you can still buy them but I just think it's not worth it for me to hold on to two copies of this. I mean, these editions are nice, but if the U.S. is going to have their own, like, nice, cool design editions, then I'd rather stick with them. Also, the other Mistborn books, besides just the original trilogy, are getting new covers. So, this is a themed reading vlog, so my next themed reading vlog is also going to have a theme. Because it's a themed reading vlog, obviously, so think about what that theme might be. <laughs> Alright, now you got to go back in the box. Alright. I'm like, okay, so here's my thing. Here's my thing. This year, I was like, I set my Goodreads goal really low. I'm like, I need to not focus on the number of books that I'm reading and focus on the content. However, 
the last six months have been personally really stressful for me there's just some like family stuff going on and like work stuff going on that I'm kind of like working through now and I'm in a little bit of a better place but I didn't want to pick up anything that was like super hard to read like I literally wanted to just lay in my bed and just read like really easy books so I did and I've like read like 60 something books already this year which is good I surpassed my goal um but I really am trying to not attach myself to the number of books read being the goal because then I'm just going to pick things that are super easy to read and I really want to be reading like these kinds of books that are all on my shelves right like these are the books that really resonate with me and then kind of using like the indie really easy to read romances and stuff like that as a little bit of a palate cleanser or if there's like a really anticipated romance for me read. you know what I mean like I don't want to read, be reading only kindle unlimited like smut but I don't want to stop reading it either. I just really want to be shifting my focus to fantasy because I just feel like I, I looked at all the books that I read this year and I had only read one YA fantasy. I had read other YA, I had read adult fantasy, but YA fantasy is like my favorite. So I'm really trying to focus more on like adult and YA fantasy and just reading more of those books because I just really miss being that kind of reader and I always want to go back and look at some of my older vlogs where like I was only reading like 60 something books a year but they were all like fantasy books and just letting my letting myself take time to get through books I think that is an important thing I think I've been feeling like oh to hit this number like I need to kind of like rush and that's why I've been reading easy books that are really easy to digest and like I can read really fast whereas like I all of a sudden just have said to myself in the past literally just like week or so like there is no rush there's no rush to get through this book so just like read it as you can and i read a crown of glass and i mean probably like took me almost like a week to read that book and like i would rather that pace where it's not interrupting with my life where i feel like oh my god i didn't read enough today or something like that like i just don't want this hobby because i'm so entrenched in the online space to then become stressful especially because i make content about it so like i don't need to read 18 books a month i don't like i can read even five or six and if there are five or six books that i really wanted to read then i'm okay with that so that's kind of my new mantra just so i can be happier as a reader and be picking up more of the books that i want to be reading so that's that but i am just truly really loving this so far it's really giving everything that i want and i'm really excited to be doing a reading vlog for this book i'm just gonna focus on reading my little book it's like gross and muggy and like overcast outside like it's not even nice outside so i'm just gonna sit in the air conditioner that we finally purchased for the living room which was a necessity and read relax okay update i filmed a booktube video i was gonna film today and i was like no i think i'm much more suited to filming one video at a time because ah, it just gets overwhelming anyways i'm here for an update i am now on page 338 and at part two things went cr things went crazy oh my god i was this vlog is going to be spoiler free by the way, I'm going to try and keep it as spoiler free as possible. If I do say something spoilery, oh you know what I'll do, I'll make a spoilery section at the end so that way you're not really missing my like, experience of reading it while I go and then I'll do like a whole spoiler review at the end. So I'll put timestamps and stuff. But anyways, okay, something crazy just happened and I was not, because I think like the plot was kind of meandering, like she's training with Max and like we don't really know where it's going to go and then... And then it happened and I was not prepared for the direction that the story was going to take but I love it I think it's so intriguing like Max and Tasana have a lot of trauma in their past and the way that they're like able to connect and I just feel like their personalities are so distinct so distinct and I'm loving their story so far they haven't even kissed yet and I'm just like I'm like okay can you like kiss already like I'm waiting but uh, yeah, obviously this book has a lot more plot and it's a lot more plot forward, really interesting world building and I'm interested to kind of see, I feel like we're really just kind of scratching the surface and that this book will probably expand in scope considering that I got the next one, it's huge, but also, okay, so I did not unbox this on camera because I was too impatient, but I got the second book, Children of Fallen Gods, in the mail. Okay, these guys are expensive. They're like 30 bucks, which is kind of crazy to me, but I know that they're like the indie published hardcovers. But however, what I love about them is 
stunning spines. So I have the second one in the series so I can dive right in and then I'll probably buy the third one soon. I will probably work by magic with some Amazon gift cards so I don't pay all the monies for it up front. But I mean, literally, look, that's beautiful. I just like love, I don't know, and like these are just really nice additions. And uh, there's just a lot going on here. So I think it's really gonna expand in scope and be like epic fantasy, and I love that. I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna be a Crystal Broadband stan after this one. But yeah, I love our girly Tasana. She is just like so determined and really will just do anything to help her people. And we have Max, who's kind of like this recluse, and uh, everything about their dynamic is just perfect. I love them. And oh my god, I've been looking at fan art. Not spoilery fan art, like I'm just looking on Chris Broadband's page. So she wouldn't post spoilery fan art of her own series, but yeah, I love them. I'm so excited to see where things go from here, but I'm scared. I'm scared. I feel like this is going to end on a really big cliffhanger, and I am scared. But yeah, I'm so drawn to this world, and I'm really excited to be reading these books. So that's it for now, and I'm going to go, and we'll see how far I get by the end of tonight, but I probably won't update you guys until another time, because I'm about to take off all my makeup after this. So, see you. It's honestly so, like, rainy and gloomy out right now that I kind of wish I could stay home. You can probably tell my lighting is not ideal, but there's no sun it's like rainy gloomy perfect reading weather but i have to go to work however a quick update before i go i got to page 427 of daughter of no worlds i'm on my whole like i'm gonna take my time with books and then i flew through this yesterday because i could not put it down i can see why people say that like this series is so good and devastating like it really just like evolved this depth also i was waiting so long for them to kiss and they finally it was good it was good. It's definitely not like a super spicy book. I would say it probably has like, I don't know if there's going to be more, but I would say at this point in the series, like one, like very like emotional spicy scene. It's not like super descriptive, like a smutty smut, but I like that. I think when I read a lot of smut back to back, sometimes I'm looking for scenes with a little bit, um, looking for books that focus a bit more on the emotional intimacy and then that like connection leading up to the spicy times rather than just like the spicy spicy you know what i mean it's also different in like fantasy and contemporary so it just depends on what i'm in the mood for but it was good i enjoyed it and i'm loving this book the fantasy is so cool like the monster element is very unique i haven't really seen anything kind of like that done and it's leading to a very interesting character development like in the head back and forth i don't want to spoil anything but it's really cool and unique and i'm really in love with this world and i'm so excited to just continue on with the series i did it i finished and i am absolutely obsessed i would have to say this book reads more on what do i have this like little curl here okay i it literally just looks like a little devil's horn oh my god Okay, it won't go away. I would say this book reads more like adult, epic, high fantasy with a little bit of spice, but wow, I love these characters. I thought the plot twists were insane. I did not see the direction that it was going in. I loved the teacher-student um, aspect with her, like learning her magic when she's with, with Max, and Tasana just obviously really like cares, and she's so like just headstrong and really like willing to do what is right and she's like a little bit conniving and like a but like uses her conniving skills for good to kind of like get what she wants out of a situation so she's so smart and then max is just like so snarky and like funny but they build such this like beautiful relationship and i feel like max is different than a lot of other love interests that we see in a lot of fantasy romances like he does not like have like the dark broody thing going for him he kind of has like reclusive nerdy hermit crab vibes but like i love him for that and i don't know the magic and the plot just got like so insane and i literally don't want to say anything because i don't want to spoil but the way that they communicated with the magic was really cool and added a very mental element to it with like inner dialogue and i thought that that was so well done and i just felt like this was a very epic it felt like epic high fantasy and you know with some spice so i loved it also 
love the butterfly magic and I, I really feel like both of our characters developed a lot over the course of this novel so kind of scared for what's to come obviously this is five stars now I have children of fallen gods and oh boy this this is long and I'm scared I'm probably gonna start I'm probably gonna take a little nap because I have a headache and then when I finish my nap I'm gonna start this book tonight but again I'm just chilling I'm not rushing myself to get through books fast so whatever gets read gets read but that first book I feel like I read it so fast because I just got so sucked into the world and magic and like the dynamics between Tasana and Max like ugh, I just loved it so I'm excited to continue on. I've also heard the ending of this is like devastating and I am scared and I also need to get the third book and then it was just announced that Serpents and the Wings of Night which is her vampire series just got acquired by Bramble which is the fantasy romance imprint of Tor. Love that. So many publishers have fantasy romance imprints now. So that is getting a new edition in December. So I'm probably going to wait until those editions are published to read them but like have my indie versions of this I just like don't feel the need to own duplicate copies if they're kind of similar you know what I mean so I try to like I have my exclusive edition um collection as well but because the indie books are s like kind of expensive and you actually can't get that first book anymore so like there's no point to me trying to get it now you know what I mean but I'm definitely gonna buy this third book in case they there's some sort of deal going on with these but I think she's keeping these indie um so yeah so that series is going to be traditionally published so i'm excited and i will be just getting those editions when they come out so um but yeah i definitely like really love her skill as an author i think she's very talented and i'm so excited to see what she continues to do in the space and i'm excited for that vampire series and to read that one and to follow along on the journey of her releasing books traditionally published that one i know is like a duology but it's um a three-part it's a six-part triple duology series where like each two books follows a different couple which is an interesting structure as well so I'm excited to pick that up but yeah in the meantime focusing on this series of hers hello so it's been a while since I updated but I actually wanted to do something a little fun and do a mini Target haul because I did go to Target and buy some goodies I already put the food away just got some snacks you know a good snack run but um it's been a while oh shit to put the ice cream in the freezer it hasn't been too long but hopefully it's not too melted you see this purple thing behind me that is a wig because i'm going to a wig party later and that is just where i put it for now okay so speaking of going to the wig party later the first thing is i got this color pop super shock shadow in the sage ripple because i have my pink wig later and i wanted an eyeshadow to match then I got uh, these press-on nails. I kind of have a love-hate relationship with press-on nails. They don't always last as long as I thought, as I want them to, and I'm very not gentle with my hands, so I end up ripping them off a lot of times. But these are so cute, but I wanted to give them a try. They're little strawberries with French tips. How can I resist? And then the next thing I got is this fit me this maybelline fit me powder um pressed powder in porcelain so i've been using the loose powder but it's in like a shade that's just slightly too dark for me and i wanted to try the pressed powder version to see if i liked it better and this i just kind of use as like a yeah it's a finishing powder let's see oh and it comes with a little thingy that's nice so I really actually like this powder in terms of its like blur blurring capabilities. I feel like it works really well. Definitely the loose powder, you probably get more bang for your buck, but this is probably good for on the go and it's, it's all cheap anyway, so it doesn't matter. And then the last thing that I got is this Hero Force Shield sunscreen. It's a super light sunscreen, broad spectrum SPF 30. And it protects and respects acne prone skin with zinc oxide and boosts it with extreme lights don't know what those are and superfoods so the main reason that i got this is because i don't really like wearing makeup anymore like all i have on now is just my sunscreen eyebrows and mascara and like that's enough for me for a day at the office but i have a lot of redness in my face and i wanted to see if maybe using this as a sunscreen will just help me feel more confident with wearing nothing on my face it's because this will hopefully take out some of the redness so let's give it a whirl. You see it's like it's green. I kind of like this packaging though. This like this cap is very satisfying. Do -do -do. 
interesting smell. I notice when I put on products to like get the redness out of my face that my freckles become more exposed or more noticeable. Um, da -da, gotta find like better lighting. Yeah, I mean kind of, there's still some areas of my face that are like very red i would probably need like a makeup product to take the total redness out of it but yeah actually yeah you can start to see my freckles popping out so that's good and then usually what i'll do is when i just put on a sunscreen a lot of sunscreens around your makeup like are kind of meant to be used to double as primers oh wait actually now that that's kind of setting in i do kind of notice a difference but they're kind of meant to be um it, they, they can be used as primer, so I feel like I can kind of leave my face feeling tacky. So I do go over with like a loose finishing powder. Oh, I feel like not makeup, totally. I mean, it's a little bit makeup, yeah. But just, just something to kind of make my face feel not as tacky and to just do a tiny bit of blurring. Ooh. My makeup also smudged because I was outside sweating. But yeah, wow, my freckles are really popping. They're really popping today. I need something on those under eye bags. Jeez Louise. Can't tell if that's mascara or if I just did not sleep well last night. But yeah, freckles. I feel like this summer more than any other summer I've had, I have so many freckles. It's crazy. Let's see, different lighting. Yeah, wow, it definitely makes, cutting the redness definitely makes my freckles come out more. Okay, so that was my little haul, but now let's get into reading books. So essentially I started Children of the Fallen Gods, read like 15 pages two days ago, and I've just been really tired after work this week. I don't know, kind of a weird week for me, so I haven't really been reading a lot. It's also just kind of hard for me to read on weeknights, so I tend to do a lot of my, a lot more reading on the weekend so yeah i'm up to page 14 but i know i know this book is going to be painful but that's not to say that i don't do other forms of reading during the week so i finished the audiobook for the summer i turned pretty because the second season is coming out i'm like well i want to join in on the fun so i do have to read the second book and then i will probably start the show or if not i'll start the first season after i finish uh, daisy jones and the six which i'm currently finally finally putting in the effort to watch more of and in terms of audiobooks so after that finish i've like i've been in an audio book mood again which is exciting so i am currently reading the fourth book in the vampire academy series blood promise i really enjoy these audiobooks um i'm at 34 percent i started it yesterday or today so just I'm excited to be back in this world like we're really going on a journey in this one and I'm just like excited that I can get into a series that I just never picked up as a kid because it's giving me all of my like 2009 vampire vibes and that's what I want and I do eventually want to watch the movie that came out a few years ago and the show that came out even though it got cancelled I do just want to watch it just to like live in the moment but I need to finish all the books first duh and i have 10,000 other shows to watch in the meantime so today i'm going to my wig party later um i'll definitely take some footage of me all dolled up in my wig hi and then i i'm just gonna spend this weekend chillaxing probably cleaning my house and feeding this is my look for the wig party um it's a little itchy but honestly i'm having so much fun look at look at me i'm in this purple hair i did cut the bangs myself so you can kind of tell that they look weird but honestly they, i think they're fine enough whatever it's just a wig but i feel kind of cute i didn't think i'd be able to pull off purple hair and i got my matching eyeshadow which i think is key and i'm about to go have some fun at the wig party so i'll see you guys later
Okay, hi pals. I'm reading Children of Fallen Gods. I read like 15 pages on Wednesday and then didn't pick up, pick up the book again until Saturday because I just like was really not in the mood to read after work this week. But, but I have been chipping away at it these past few days. It's now Sunday and I'm on page 237 and oh my god, there's a new, like a completely new storyline that is being woven into the story here and it actually has me hooked. I'm wondering how it's going to tie into Tasana's magic and tie into the main plot because right now it's like completely separate and it's really kind of unclear what the link between the two of them is and it's kind of almost like a gamble when authors do that right because you need to make sure that you're gonna like that storyline as much as the first storyline and I'm equally like as intrigued. I honestly think that this series is kind of pitched wrong to be pitched as a fantasy romance like it truly just reads like an epic high fantasy and yeah there's like spice in it but like kind of barely compared to the rest of the world building and all the intricacies there's a lot of like war talk in here and I just find it's like very political very like everything that I like to read in an epic fantasy is in this book more so than things that I would see in fantasy romance books in the in the genre so I honestly almost feel like it's like a mislabeled kind of book but it, it's amazing so far like Tasana is such a strong character and I love the relationship between her and Max. They're, all these characters are kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place and it's very it's a very intriguing political situation and honestly this series has just expanded to be so much more than I thought it was and I'm loving every second so for the rest of the night I'm kind of just gonna chill and be reading and I'm enjoying my time with these characters. Okay pals a reading update on Children of Fallen Gods. See. I am on page 534. There's like 615 pages or so. Things are getting insane. The storylines that have been weaved together are coming together in the most insane way. I think this book is insane. It is so high fantasy, truly epic, and I'm so surprised, like in a, in a good way, about like what Curse of Broadbent is able to do with this world. It is truly just an amazing high fantasy and I'm like literally all of these reveals that are happening like they just keep coming one after one and I'm like honestly afraid to keep reading and finishing this book because I am scared of what is going I'm scared bad things are gonna happen and I just feel like I'm gonna be devastated at the end I've heard the end of this book is devastating and like I I, I have like a little bit under 100 pages and I I'm afraid. I am afraid. So I will report back later and see if my fears have been confirmed. I'm sure that they will be. And then I'll be starting Mother of Death and Dawn, which I think has my favorite cover in the series later. And I'm going to be better reading it with Tori from Tori Between Pages. So I'm so glad that our timing was able to line up on this. But wow, I am afraid. Okay, it's been a while since I've updated you guys. My camera's like dead. Ugh. I'll try and go quick. I finished Children of the Fallen Gods. The end is as emotionally devastating as everyone says, so I agree with them on that. It it killed me. I was like, oh my god. The way that the different storylines weave together and come together in the end is insane, and it's just so much more of an expanded world than I thought going in. And now we get three perspectives in this book and it's so crazy to see how the different things are coming together i mean she is chunky right like there's a lot of politics war maneuvering but also the love story i'm in agony right like i'm in agony right now reading about them i just want everything with max and tisana to be okay and they're not okay right now i'm on page 272 there's about 700 pages in this book so i've been reading it slowly throughout the week but like i've been saying throughout this video just given my time Give myself time to read fantasy books just being pretty chill but uh yeah i want to make some decent progress on this book tonight and um because i just you know have more time to read on the weekend so i really want to focus on my chunky fantasies so that's what i will be doing i'm about to get some chipotle and read my book and it's gonna be a beautiful lovely reading night and also this might be my favorite cover in the series tisana just looks so beautiful and my camera died. Okay, bye!
Okay, so hello, quick reading update. I'm in pain, as I am reading this book for the majority of the time. I am on page 398, so I have about 300 pages to go, but I'm in pain. Like, I'm in pain. The Some characters were separated. There's some crazy things going on with the magic. Like, this series is, I just feel like I'm a broken record at this point, but this series is so much more than I could imagine it. I love Tasana, but what I also think is really interesting is the villains in this series are so well characterized. You really understand their motive and like nothing is black and white because Tasana and Max, like our heroes, also have done really bad things in their past. And I think that a book that can kind of capture the human condition where not everything is always clearly defined in terms of like morals and who is in the right and who is in the wrong is it's just always so well done so i mean i could totally see this series like being published by a traditional publisher and being put in the adult fantasy section like if this book was traditional that is where i would classify them and they're just so beautifully written so well done such intricate high fantasy with such an interesting concept and the way the magic works and the connections between the characters through this magic and there's just layers and layers and layers to this plot and I just don't want to say more. I am going to film a spoilery section with my thoughts at the end just so I can like express everything that has been happening but that section will be clearly labeled so like you can skip over it and it's just going to be in one chunk at the end. But wow, the directions that this has gone in are just crazy. And finally, I have like all three of the books together and they just look so beautiful together. And oh, they're also really heavy when you hold them all together. And I'm just so glad I vlogged my experience with the series because I think it's just really cool to capture the way I was feeling on camera. So yeah, I'm probably not gonna update until I finish because I only have 300 pages left and I don't know what more I can say without spoiling, but it's going, it's going. And I am scared for like that final 30%. I just know things are going to get insane and I'm gonna be scared. Honestly, it's super late. I clearly have no makeup on and just got out of the shower, but I wanted to get this last clip of my vlog in so that I can post it. So we're just being real and unfiltered here. This is my face. I think my camera does have like an auto face blurring feature. So just like as a disclosure, like my face is probably a little bit more blurred than it is in, in normal real life, I guess. That's just something it came with. So let's wrap up. First things first, I did get this book in the mail from Penguin Teen. So thanks Penguin Teen for sending it to me. It's House of Marianne by JL and it has a really pretty case design underneath it. This world is made of glass, then I will dance with a hammer in my hand. It's so fun and I love that more publishers are doing like case designs. So this is about Quell who has lived her entire life on the run. She and her mother are being hunted. Um, and so she has to be inducted into a debutante society of magical social elites. And if she can pass their three rights of membership, then she'll be able to secretly bury her forbidden magic forever. And if her dark magic is discovered, she will be killed. So it seems like it's a mix of like debutante society and magic societies. So that's super cool. And I'm excited to dig into this one. Oh, I also don't think I made a vlog clip, but I got sent maybe what is the best package ever. I got the sprayed edge versions of Daughter of the Pirate King and Daughter of the Siren Queen. The person from Wednesday Book that runs their like social media influencer like outreach program like sent me an email like oh we're gathering interest and I instead of like just filling out the form I filled out the form and I emailed her and I'm like I am Trisha Levenseller's number one fan and um, oh my god I can see so many books I'm so excited and oh. I'm just I'm just overjoyed because I love this series. So anyways, I have now finished the trilogy. It took me pretty much all month to read it, which like, no shame in the amount of time it takes to read books. So, what a journey, what a journey we went on. So let me give you my non-spoilery thoughts. This wrapped up the series so beautifully. There was so much political warfare and the ending I feel like just brought it so full circle. Like this is truly like an epic high fantasy series. I honestly, when I picked up the first book, I did not know like truly how epic the series would be. Also, look at these spines. I'm so excited to have these on my shelves. Like, Tasana, Max, their their journey, like, it, 
I don't know why people say it's like a fantasy romance because yes there's spicy scenes but it's like I think it focuses so much more on the plot, the magic, the world building than the romance. It is like a fantasy with a romance, romance subplot but that romance has spice. There was also an unexpected romance in book three and even though they were like evil I kind of loved it. So if you were thinking about the series definitely 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 pick it up because it was amazing. I'm just gonna adjust this camera. I am obsessed with this. I just think it was such a well-crafted journey like I was so blown away by the amount of intricate details that obviously went into planning the series and five stars for all the books five stars they were all incredible amazing and just oh my like oh my god like I feel like this was a journey of epic proportions on par with other epic fantasies that I have read so now I'm gonna get into the spoilery section I did want to film a literal a little spoilery section because I did want to be able to talk more in depth about the things that go on here but I did just want to um, not have it be like during my regular reaction so anyone that hasn't read the series can turn away so I'm just gonna put spoiler section like on the bottom um, but there shouldn't be anything else left in this video it's just gonna be, be me saying goodbye so you can also just like exit out right now okay so spoilery thoughts on daughter of the of no world this plot description is like pretty vague and I think most of the plot description about Tasana going to Max and like having to learn and that she's a former slave like just barely scratches the surface because when we get into like what Roche is and basically the deal that Tasana makes to have Roche in her mind and after we learn that Roche basically killed all of Max's family like that was just so insane to me but yet she kind of made this deal to like she basically was another a slave again but to a different master as she like says in this book and like the way she is able to manipulate a situation is just insane but I don't think that she was really ready for the consequences of Roche and it was nuts so then then oh my gosh then we get to children of fallen gods and all of a sudden we just get this a random person named Afi and we're reading her story and I'm actually so intrigued and I actually thought this was a series without Faye but haha just kidding there are Faye but Afi is basically just like ignored her whole life like all she just wants is someone to love her and not abandon her and she's kind of like betrayed by everyone and we're like reading about her story and I'm so intrigued by it even though I'm like I have no idea how this connects but I was reading this and I'm like Afi has to be Roche like there's no way that there would be a third POV and that's not like Roche's story and how Roche came to be like what they are and then the reveal about Roche meaning no one in the Fae language so well done and it's so interesting because you really kind of can see like how Roche has just like lost so much of herself like Afi did not know herself at all I loved that there were like hints of romance with her and Cadwan, and I really wanted them to get together even though I knew Afi was probably gonna be like evil Roche and in the meantime like we're dealing with Xerath we're dealing with the slavers and there's so much like that Tasana and Max are going through and Tasana, Max, and Roche and then Roche literally like dies for Tasana in the end when we're learning about like more of the magic and like we think that Roche is gone and then Cadmon like takes her consciousness and it just gets even more crazy than that because like you see in this like final moment that like Roche like had some goodness left in her and then all of a sudden in this book she just gets evil again because Cadwan basically restored her with a Lajara and now she's like doesn't really know how to exist in a body and she actually like talks about how she like hates being alive and that she's so alone in her head and she just like really doesn't know how to function as like a mortal again because she was literally just stripped of everything and was basically just this sentient consciousness that was put into people and to like amplify their powers and it was like the whole concept of this to me is literally insane like how does someone think of this like it was so good and so well executed and clearly like there's tensions but like the budding romance between Cadwan and and Afi was like a surprise to me but I didn't think that they were actually gonna like have sex in this book and then they had a sex scene and I was like I'm rooting for them even though they're evil and Cadwan was like we just see like how the humans had destroyed all of his people and how he really just wants justice but then how it be has become so warped over 500 years because clearly he had feelings for Afi and then we have Ishqua who like betrayed Afi but then was trying to kind of redeem himself by working with the humans because Cadwan wanted to 
kill all the humans and he was like no that's actually like not good so <laughs> i think it's such a complex and layered story and then we have max who literally has no memories and reading his pov is so painful and you just see how he like really just forgets about the tragedies of his past but then like him and Tasana like obviously still care about each other and then with the Ilzaf the prison being like the third Lajara that was death like that was so cool and then in the end they healed everything but in the end it wasn't Max and Tasana that healed all of the worlds or the magics in the world it was Athey and Cadwan like in the end kind of realized that they were wrong and like gave up their lives to fix the magic and I just thought that that was so poetically beautiful. Oh, also in the meantime, we have Nura, who is Max's ex, childhood friend, and she basically, it's so interesting because she had, when she was with Roche, I guess, like, because Roche amplifies magic, she could see into the deeper layers of magic and get, like, these prophetic visions, and she had these visions of the Fae, like, attacking them, but she kind of brought it upon herself by then capturing the Fae and doing like experiments on them so she was so twisted in thinking that she had good intentions that she was so blind to the things that she was doing were like morally bad and that that's the same thing that that's why they broke up at salazari because max like she basically forced max to kill a bunch of people with roche and like that's what i'm just saying like all these things that i'm saying like how does someone sit down and like think of that and have that whole plot that whole world like this was so intricate and I just feel like I could sit down with someone and have like a two-hour conversation on everything that happened in this book because there's just so much to think about and that's why it was so hard to do this vlog non-spoilery but I wanted people who haven't read the series to just see my like emotions and reactions but it is kind of fun to sit down and do like a spoilery review because I just thought everything that happened in this book was so insane and then in the end we just have Tasana and Max like rebuilding the world having kids and having this peaceful life and it just it made me emotional because after all that they went through like they really deserved that and it's just like the story of like how many like intersecting things and like max was so different from a lot of like male main characters because he's not like this tall brooding type he's just like this grumpy old guy personality basically and him and tasana are so like witty and funny together and they just have like this true love and it's very interesting because it was like established in the first book and it was a little bit slow burn in the first book but then like the second and third books like still keep you interested in the pacing of the relationship because there's all these obstacles like keeping them apart so it's always very interesting when characters get together in the first book it's like how does the author like sustain their relationship development like throughout time and i thought that it was interesting because it did still like it didn't keep them apart all the time and when they were together it was more about like them being partners than like really any focus on the spicy scenes like yes there was like one or two spicy scenes in the books but they were just a subplot like there is so much more to these books than the romance which is why i think it is more like fantasy just with some like coincidental spice like it's not meant to be like a spicy fantasy which is totally fine but i, I think it does like a disservice to the series to advertise it as a fantasy romance because then people might not like it because they go into it thinking this is fairy porn and it is literally not <laughs> and i let me be clear i love my fairy porn so yeah i just thought of this was brilliant like i only have good things to say obviously like, that's all that i'm gonna say now because i'm like sweating because i'm like in the ring light and kind of dying but i just want to let you guys know that i have infinite love for the series and it was so so fun reading and i'm really excited i got to take you guys along on this journey so have some fun reading the books and i'll catch you guys in the next one